Oh no, mage versus paladin. Didn't expect this. Oh, he doesn't have a druid. That's right. It was Kit Kats who had the druid. I, I actually literally like this mage deck from Kit Kats. The more I analyzed it, yeah, about it. it's pretty well, cool. Uh, you were saying earlier you talked to him before, and he said he just wants to get to the blind pick phase so he he can uh, he can show, play showcase his warrior a lot. That's the mind games. Ooh, interesting. But uh, does go with the mage, and this mage deck has been very successful for him. I, I think he's um, two and zero with it so far today. No, he lost one game. He oh, lost one he? game, I believe, against okay. um, against Gooby. Well, he's pretty confident in its ability to yeah, take Yeah, Gooby on. played that Druid and got, like, two Innervates uh, early on and then was able to shut it down. That's true. All right, well, uh, Kit-Kats is still on one game away from going to the finals here. And, of course, uh, this is one of the first tournament piercers we've seen from uh, Tice as he joined Nia alone with RDU and Lothar and Life Coach. And I want to see if this team is continue to keep up the results because 2014 was a great year, especially for Tyson RDU. Maybe not so much Lothar, but uh, you know, also Lothar was, was able to finally dedicate full time. The team is definitely one of the teams that people will be looking out for in the future land season. A lot of great minds on that team. Yeah, uh, brilliant ex uh, players. <clears throat> uh, Tyson has great BM. Know, pretending like he missed lethal just to give his opponent a false shred of hope. <laughs> Saying, I don't care if you draw <laughs> intervene. You could have lethal, but doesn't even matter. Never miss an opportunity for a good old fashioned BM. Yeah. So Undertaker has been stopped and thankfully so, otherwise this game could have ended up being pretty one sided based off of how uh, the, the hand looks. He's okay with Knife Juggler dying here because it's... Well, actually, no, not really. Yeah. It, it's not that he's okay with it, but he recognizes that it's important so that way he can gain some traction on the board here. Yeah. It's a little bit of a weird hand, though. Because um, if he... Since he has Muster for Battle plus True Silver Champion, uh, if he Muster for Battle's turn 3 and then faces a situation in turn 4 where he's got a True Silver to remove a bigger creature, he's wasting... A lot of the value of Muster for Battle, so I actually wouldn't hate Outdoor Peacekeeper here, even on a Zombie Chow, just for that reason. What's so funny is because Kit Kats drew like awkward mid range cards like Near Entity and Sky Golem, he sort of wants to keep hero powering and maximizing his card usage. And so he's getting a lot of mileage when normally the deck wants to start a little bit quicker, but he doesn't mind this scenario. And getting the zombie chows out of the way earlier as well. Yeah, I mean to, to maximize value to get, to get this, the semblance of board control because pretty soon, like zombie chow is just so useless in the face of a sludge belcher or even like a, a pilot shredder. It just doesn't do anything. True. Hey, thinking of whether or not he wants to play the clockwork no, but he knows that it's just going to be fodder for uh, either the weapon or the the one one. So he holds off on it. Well, What's if the true silver comes out, then it ends up being a. Well, it might influence whether or not the true silver comes out. We'll see. Maybe Tice feels inclined to maximize his hero power as well. It's not as easy as a decision as it may seem. No, but no, no. The peacekeeper. It's not so much that you want to reduce the attack of zombie chows, but you value the three the board because you can have the peacekeeper challenge the zombie chow as well as whatever comes out most likely. Yeah, it's His the body that you're worried about. Belcher, though. Yeah. Oh, Sludge Belcher would be pretty devastating. And he decides to to try and maximize hero power instead. Oh, mirror entity. Yeah, mirror entity's pretty nice here. Ah, but he already had one, so the second draw is not the greatest in that situation. It's giving him exactly average value. Three, three minion. Unless... Gives a Captain Greenskin. Which is also funny because Kit Kats won't have a weapon to buff. So Echo on that minion is a little... Yeah. Useless. Yeah, it's on curve. Uh, ideally you want to have it for True Silver Champion, but... Uh, well, having it for a weapon in general is pretty what, good. What this does do is give him initiative on the board for um, Skyly Golem. Oh yeah, that's true as well. Because <laughs> he's going to be able to trade and play the Sky Golem. 
And if he ha if he equips two server champion to get rid of the Sky Gom, not only is he right. wasting the value of the Captain Greed skin, but you also have to deal with that second body as well. Sure. And then now he actually has like a pretty strong anchor for a good echo target. Well, actually, Ooh. hold on. Sylvanas definitely complicates things. Yeah, since the Paladin Sky Golem was played first, Death Rattle trigger first, and if it trades in, then the Sylvanas would steal whatever would come out from the Sky Golem. Mm. Might it be best to load up and then trade, or trade, or just ignore it? Because if you play Knife Juggler and then Clockwork no uh, Gnome, you can still Echo Medivh and then trade. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is great. If it steals a Clockwork Gnome, that's the best case. Oh, that's definitely not the one he wanted. Yeah, but... Uh, oh! <laughs> Silvermoon Guardian is... Definitely now not the one he didn't want it. Yeah. Mustafer battle off the top is pretty... It's pretty big. It's pretty big, because now he can um, juggle a ton. Yeah, a lot of times, uh, Knife Juggler won't live another turn, but since he stole it... Alright, so Peacekeeper first to evaluate the juggle. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he gets. Mm. Ah. Face not what he wants here. But still has three juggles. Mm -hmm. Oh, gonna go face. <sighs> Already wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's not too bad. He just wanted one to hit the Divine Shield because he knew what he was going to trade it in for the Knife Dragon anyway. Right. But at least he gets one to face in that situation. <clears throat> okay, so two of this mana would be dedicated to killing a Knife Juggler. So then how do you want to spend the six? You want to drop this big, bigger minion, but then if Quartermaster comes out, mm. are you in trouble? Otherwise, the only other option is to go Knife Jugglers. I think you're in trouble. And Pilot Shredder. I think you're in trouble either way, uh, but Knife Juggler, like if Quartermaster comes out next turn, he's going to get at least two buffed no matter what. Mm -hmm. Or at least three, most likely, because of the hero power that he'll actually use on that turn. So if you want to maxim or minimize the potential of Quartermaster, then ping Knife Juggler and Pilot Shredder would be the best, because you have a chance of killing off one of the one ones. But Paladin Shredder is good too. Now, we did he run any other secrets besides Mirror Entity that we saw? I don't think so. I haven't seen Counterspell or... Um, oh, a duplicate. duplicate. Okay. So Mad Scientist will have some, uh, some value. Ah, uh, well, it hits the face, so... Well, there is no Quartermaster. Is this a time to drop Tyrion? It might be. Actually, I think Tyrion is pretty strong here. Yeah. So that way you can start controlling the board, start pushing. Because like Tyrion's now your win condition to do a lot of damage. He's got 15 damage just in his weapon, plus, uh, you know, of course, the Divine Shield is 6 damage too. For so. sure, yeah. Ho ho! cool, but it's dead. Right. And I don't think this deck ran any type of uh, hard removal, like Polymorph. Oh my. Yeah. Archmage had tonight, yes I did. Well, he's got the Sky Golem. Yeah, that challenges it. Clockwork Gnome might give him like some, might give him a one spell, like stealth for Archmage had tonight, yes. That's very true. All right, well, that Cult Master is interesting because now he can trade into the Sky Golem, draw a card, use a weapon, kill off w most likely whatever comes out, unless it's a Mogashan Warden. He actually is like in a scenario where he needs more weapon hits. Oh, I okay. could just protect so I guess the Tyrion. Yeah, fair enough. 
I mean, it could easily turn into something else too. We'll see. Yeah, I think this is. I mean, he's he's in a pretty good position right now. Uh, he has to know at least getting a feel for the deck before that. There's there's not many very many ways for this mage deck to deal with Tyrion besides just like a fireball. Right. And even then, Ashbringer is going to most likely win you the game over the course of the three turns. Oh. Huh. That's interesting. I haven't seen that card in a while. And it's also going to become a 5-5. Five five. <laughs> How convenient. It's actually kind of funny. And it uh, demands to be dealt with as well. So that card that just rolled out, for anybody who doesn't know, is an Ethereal Arcanist. And what it does is it gains plus two, plus two if you control a secret at the end of the turn. And that's a card that's like pretty good in arena if you can get it to work uh, at least before GVG because you know some secrets like counter spell and whatnot or even spellbender which is a really good card in arena yeah people wouldn't like trigger it immediately so you could get like a 5-5 five five value from before it was pretty good there was actually some variations of secret mage uh, a little bit prior to GVG that were actually running it mm -hmm. because sometimes you can get into a situation where uh, especially with Mirror Entity, if they don't have a spell to be able to deal with it, then right. you can use Mirror Entity to answer your opponent's Mirror Entity and just uh, snowball secrets. I That's think a really this great is going to duplicate the two ones, the Loot Hoarders. Yeah, uh, this is also a sequence error from Kit Kat. Or maybe he wanted that, I don't know. I think he might have just wanted that. Because uh, the other options were Mad Scientist or... Hearthstone's a fun <laughs> If you can't laugh while you watch a Hearthstone game, like, I don't even know, I don't even want to cast it, if you can't, if you're not allowed to laugh. It's just funny. Oh! oh. It's useless, he's still he's dead. dead. anyway. And this series is going to be tied up. Uh-oh. Kit Kats now. A comeback is very real. And uh, momentum is actually a big deal in, uh, in these matches. Uh, decision making can be influenced by your your feel of, of the overall match. And uh, sometimes if you're on tilt from being up 2-0 and then going down 0-2 uh, to move into match 5, sometimes the it can get to you. Sometimes the tilt is real. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I think, uh, you know, it's in good spirits. Two games end up being one-sided. Two games end up being one-sided for Tyus and then now we're going to game number five here. Uh, not really sure if he's going to stick with the mage. I think it's pre pretty strong. Paladin is just so good when it starts early game with zombie chow and the shielded mini bot, though. It's really hard to stop. Yeah. Uh, I kick out to my go to a comfort pick here and pick up the warrior. Um, we'll see. Um, Maybe he feels like his warrior is not very good against the paladin because it's too slow or, you know, paladin's too fast. Or, um, you know, maybe he really just doesn't like the way Tice's lineup looks against it, so it's true. he doesn't feel confident. Realistically, he might.